Hello. Now that you have your Pocket.io development platform, let's see what's inside. You should have one Pocket.io. Should have one attach card. You should have two ribbon cables. Should have one micro USB cable. And then one 24 volt, one amp power adapter with international plugs. Next step will be connections. So to connect your Pocket I.O., it's important to have it connected to the attach card so that you can attach to other peripherals and other sensors, actuators. So getting this connection right is important and usually only needs to be done the first time. Once it's done, you shouldn't ever probably need to unplug these cables. So it always helps me to set the Pocket I.O. on the left side and the attach board on the right and this way you can attach these ribbon cables in the middle and the um, mating will be a lot uh, more intuitive and uh, easier to not mess up. So these two ribbon cables that were provided, I usually start off by putting the whole side. I'll put those down for both cables. So then we'll focus on one and we'll do the other. So I'll start with the top and we'll start at the attach card. So this with the facing the pin, the holes facing down, there will be this mating notch, and it'll be keyed. So I insert this into here. Once it's firmly in place, I'll take this other end, and there's a key notch that should be facing downward when it connects to the pocket I/O. Now this step can be tricky. There's no uh, key notch. There's nothing to align, so you have to be very precise. And again, this is why we recommend when you do it, just do it once is it's very easy to bend the pins if not done properly. And we'll repeat this process now for this bottom set. So we'll attach it to the attach card first. And now the other end to the pocket I.O. Great. You can also order different size ribbon um, for different applications if you need the attach card to be further away from the pocket I.O. The ones we provide uh, seem adequate for most uh, use cases. So now that we have these, if you had a project where you wanted to connect your I.O.s, uh, we recommend that you do it now while there's no power applied. Uh, this way the, there's no uh, possibility of shorting anything. Uh, in our instance, we're not actually going to be attaching anything else, so we'll move on to now attaching the power. Now we have our universal power adapter here. We're in the US, so we'll be using the US faceplate for the plug. Take this and insert it into your outlet. And plug the barrel connector to the top. Once this is done, the typical operation of the Pocket I.O., it'll auto start and reload the last application that you programmed. Every Pocket I.O. should be shipped with the Blink user LED uh, program. So after 20 or 30 seconds, you should see your user LEDs start to toggle as such. Um, this is a good way to know that the unit's been shipped to you is in perfect working condition and um, that it's operating as it should. So at this point, You've pretty much got it already going and set up, and uh, the next steps would be when you uh, want to start doing your own application code um, and doing programs yourself. So up to this point, we were very deliberately did not connect the USB cable from the PC to the Pocket I.O. It's very important to install all the software in this next session first before plugging this in, uh, on Windows platforms, there's been many instances where the drivers, if it's plugged in beforehand, even after installation, there will be issues. So please um, hold off on plugging it in until after we complete this next section. So the next step will be um, the uh, programming IDE. We'll be using the Arduino. 
IDE. So you want to go to their website and download and install their software. So you can see the link here. So Arduino main software. There'll be a page here, and they're usually continually updated. Currently, it's Arduino 1.6.12. You come over here to whatever OS you're running. I'm running a Mac, so I would click here to begin the download process. It asks if you'd like to contribute. We'll just download for now. And that's all we need for this. Able to open it. Let's say sure. And there we go. And at least on the Mac, that's all that was needed to install and get this up and running. Um, the next steps we'll do will be requiring to install the Intel Edison packages, and then we'll be followed up by installing Maxim specific in packages for the Pocket IO. So to install any board packages, you go to Tools, Board, Boards Manager. Right now we're going to do the Intel Edison, so go down to Type, drop down, go to Arduino Certified. The second one here, Intel i686 boards, Edison. We want 1.6.7. Go install. So we'll install the board package and tools necessary. And you can see the progress there. The Intel Edison is the main processing unit uh, underneath the Pocket IO, hence why we need these packages. Oh, there we go. Great. So now you can see the status here shows the Intel i686 boards installed. Now, as a note, I always find that it's best practice to, anytime you install a new library, you should close the entire program. Um, if you don't, if you install a new library or you update a library, it's possible that changes from that version to the next, if you continue to modify code, uh, can create errors. Uh, we've seen them, and um, then it requires you to remove. It gets a little bit uh, messy, so I always find that's really good practice. So we closed out the program, and we'll reopen it. So we've installed the Intel Edison libraries now. We want to go and install the Maxim libraries. In order to know that the standard software does not ship with access to ours, so you should go to the file and preferences. From there, there should be an additional boards manager URLs. That's where we provide a link such that this tool can be aware of our libraries. So you'll provide this link. This link can also be found um, on our page um, at the Maximum Integrated website for the Pocket IO. And this, again, is just a step. You do it once, and you're done. So you click OK. As stated before, I find it just always best to close out the program again to be sure that when it reloads, it will look and know about these uh, libraries uh, now that we've provided an additional location. Now that it's up, we'll go, as we did before, to Tools, Boards, Boards Manager, and it'll be, instead of last time, we're going to go to Contributed. Now you should see this. You won't see that field if you didn't do the step I did previously, but now we have this, Maxim Boards by Maxim Integrated, Pocket I.O. Now, it's always best to install the most latest version. In this instance, it's 1.0, so we'll go Install. And it's already done. Close it out. And now at this point, you have everything installed on your PC that you would need to program the Pocket I.O. So now it's safe at this point to connect the USB cable to the Pocket I.O. to uh, load a new program. So we'll take the USB cable that was provided.
plug it into one of your USB ports. And then, this is important, there are two micro USB ports on the Pocket I.O. This one next to this green connector, this is for programming for the Arduino IDE. The port beneath it is a serial port for debugging. Um, it's useful and handy to do that. We won't cover that here. And just as a note, this green connector is for motor power in case you have an application where you need to drive motors. So now that we have this connected, we'll go back to the Arduino IDE. We'll go down to Tools, Boards, now you should see that there is a slot down here for Maxim boards, and it'll say Maxim Pocket I.O. This is what we want to select. Once selected, we'd also want to go down to Tools and select the port. Now, I don't have any other boards attached, and mine conveniently also says Intel Edison. However, yours may not. On a Windows machine, it'll say a COM port. Now, if you're not sure, it's always easy. You can just unplug and then replug it in, and that's when the port, whatever COM port disappears, then you'll know that that's the COM port you should select for programming. So this is our port, and you'll see now the board, Maxim Pocket I.O., and uh, we're set. So we go down to File now, and we've provided a, a whole sort of different examples that are already um, vetted to exercise each of the blocks that the Pocket I.O. does. Now there's so many different functions that it can do from digital inputs, digital outputs, analog inputs, analog outputs, motors, IO link, RS-485. We've tried to help uh, enable you to get going faster so each of these examples corresponds with each one of these blocks. So in the Arduino IDE, go to File, Examples, and then there's a section for Examples for Maxim Pocket IO. Now you can see each one of these PIO AI would respond to the correspond to the analog input. There's analog output. We are going to go to the digital output. And the example here is PIO DO blink. Once opened, we can close this other template. And you'll see here this has a brief description of what it does, and you have this already here, and all you need to do is click Upload. Now, when it ships, it's running this user LED program. Now we're going to load it, and it should start running this digital output, and it'll do the same functionality, but with the digital outputs. So let's go ahead. Click Upload. You're compiling. It says Transfer Complete, Done Uploading. And as you can see, now the digital outputs are toggling up and down. Now this probably isn't too useful of an application as you wouldn't be just doing this, but you'd get the gist that you can now drive these and you didn't have to write a line of code, but you could get going. Now from this point, you can usually take a look at the examples we've provided and take parts of each to combine to whatever application that you might desire. You may want to take a digital input and then drive a digital output based on that response. So let's look at the structure of the examples. All of them follow the same structure, so um, once you get familiar with that, it should be easy to um, analyze that and go from there to create your own custom uh, programs. So as I said at the top here, you'll have a brief description. This next section here is the include. Now for this, we're including the digital output library because that's what we're using. If you include others, you need to include those as well. The naming architecture uh, uh, is very standard. It's PIO for pocket IO, and then whatever function, DO or AO, AI. The next will be to create an instance of this. You then can provide any additional variables that you need for your application. The next block of code is a setup. This is only done once and done at startup. It's a great spot for initializing any other variables that you need. Now it's important to note that every library that we provide has a method for initializing. It's dot init. You should always call that before using any of ours. Um, it's important to get that peripheral block um, in a good state such that it'd be ready, but you only need to do it the once. 
And then for this instance, we set the mode to push-pull. Documentation can be found on our website about all of the different methods for each of these classes. Um, so don't be too worried that we're calling some here and you're, you're not sure where those get called from, but most of these examples provide the most common um, methods that will be used, but there's documentation to go over uh, others uh, to know all the ins and outs for each of these blocks. So the last block of code is the loop. Now this one will run indefinitely and repeatedly. So you see we are driving the PIODO write output for the digital output one. It'll go high. We delay, then we drive two, and go all the way through eight. And then we start driving them low, going from eight down to one. So a very simple example, but I feel like very powerful once you start combining all these blocks and you can be as creative as you want. Um, and use them for any applications you so desire. Uh, so a quick note, uh, as you see, when we started and we opened this, it automatically uh, loaded the last program that was uh, loaded. Now, if you wish to ensure that this is the case, so say you wanted this at startup to run uh, the uh, last example, that, uh, last sketch that you just uploaded, there's this toggle switch here. Now changing it in any direction, it doesn't matter which one, but if you toggle this, it will reboot the Edison and lock in the last sketch. So from this point forward, any time you um, power it down and turn it on, you won't need to attach a cable or program anything. It'll always start and run the last sketch that was loaded on it. So if you have any other questions or issues with documentation or uh, wish to know more about the Pocket.io, you can go to our website at maximintegrated.com and search for Pocket.io.